Hi, hello, hello. Welcome back. Welcome back for installment number three in our quick three-part training series on the three skills number three of three, of the three skills required to be a real estate investor. My three simple steps, and it's very simple. Uh, so this is video number three. Um, in the three steps, obviously, we went in video number one, we talked about marketing. Number two, step two, convert. And now we are to the payday, solving. That is what you are going to do as a real estate investor to solve the problem, which is um, sometimes referred to as strategy or your exit strategy. Basically, it's what you're going to do with the property itself. And like I said, marketing, you're, fa you're finding the property. And by step three, you are solving the property. So that is how I teach it. That is how I understand it. And that's how I kind of work um, this quick system. And so, it's really simple, uh, so I'll go ahead and pull it back up and we can just quickly talk about it. We'll talk about step number three because this is the fun step, people. This is the fun step. This is how you get your money. So like I said, step one was marketing, step two was converting, and now step three is solving. And so here are just a few, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten strategies that I use specifically um, to monetize uh, my situation. To, to, this is what makes this a business. This is what makes real estate investing a business and not just something that you do. Um, I know a lot of times people try to make it just, you know, I flipped a house and they flipped one house or they wholesale something one time or they, they did a deal every now and then. And there's people, honestly, that go to classes and classes and learn and learn and never actually do a deal. I, I feel so sad for some of those people because it's not that hard uh, and I, they're probably overthinking it. So let's talk about step three so let's quickly re um, review step one was marketing you found someone with a property problem step two you got them on the phone they called you or you called them and uh, you converted them you got them to sign the contract and now you have a deal in hand and I didn't mention this before but of course you got the contract and you did it as an option so you got them under contract and you said okay I need five days ten days 15 days whatever however many days it is that you feel that you need and you write it with an option you say okay I'll give you ten dollars fifteen dollars a hundred dollars you don't go more than a hundred dollars um, because you may have to cancel and that gives you time to do your due diligence and then it'll also give you time to decide which one of these solutions how you are going to solve their problem because regardless as to whether you know how you're going to solve it or not you're going to still get the deal because there's just so much that you can do with that contract you literally can just take that contract to another real estate investor that does know what to do with it and um, wholesale the contract to them so it's a lot um, that I could too much for me to teach on this call but it is very simple and it is not hard to do and it is very lucrative so let's talk about in step one um, the, 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 the number one way that you solve or most people try to solve and that's the fix and flip so you've seen these popular TV shows and we all know about you know flipping and rehabbing and unfortunately they spend so much time on those television shows talking about you know granite countertops and you know and what kind of wood floors and you know what color paint and what they're gonna do in the bathroom because they are marketed for women and for some reason they feel like as women that's what we need to see in order to understand this but i'll tell you a little bit more sexy part of fixing and flipping is not the countertops and the stainless steel appliances it is the payday <laughs> it is when you literally go to the closing and you get your check or you sell that house or you put a tenant in it and they give you you know two and three months deposit and you walk away or you refinance that rehab and get a check and have a tenant in there you know for your cushion it, it's just so much you can do with a fix and flip that they don't talk to you about on those television shows and there's just so many different ways to flip the fix and flip and really you know make some money doing it and to, to, so that it fits because you don't get to decide what type of property problem people will call you with. You don't get to decide um, if a fix and flip works or not because there'll be situations where you can make a lot of money but it won't be by fixing and flipping the property um, or rehabbing it. Um, 
there may be a situation where you may just have to wholesale it um, or you may hold it, you know, until the market improves and keep it for a year because you don't want to pay those capital gains taxes. And we'll talk about some of that. Or you may live in it for a little bit and do some homestead investing, um, which is not on this list, but it should be. Um, homestead investing is where you basically live into the property and move into it and, and make it your homestead. And then you sell it. And I've done that. And those have been some great paydays, you know, eighty, ninety thousand dollars 90000 $100,000. Um, you know, bought a house and lived in it a couple of months, literally, uh, and then sold it and walked away with a profit. So it really just depends and you, you have to know your numbers. But let's quickly talk about what the solutions are. So we talked about the fix and flip and it is an awesome thing. It, that is an active real estate investing strategy. That is usually you're fixing and flipping for large lump sums of cash. That is not technically um, a passive way to gain income unless you are going to put a tenant in it and do some leveraged appreciation or something to that effect, um, which I, that would be a whole nother call if I kind of just went through that. But Google that term if you, you're really interested in learning what that is now, and I'm writing that down yet again. That is another video that I could make and, and kind of talk to you guys about leveraged appreciation and what that means and how you make that um, profitable for you. Equity partnering. So um, let's talk about that really quickly. Let's talk about equity partnering really quickly. Uh, you... Like I said in the last video, um, last video and video number two, you may have a situation wherein you don't necessarily um, have a property that has a lot of problems and you want to, you can partner with the owner of the property, you fix the property up and then you guys split the um the return. So say, for example, they don't want to just sign the deed over to you. You can offer what's called the equity partnering, where you go get the fix and flip funds. You go get the funds to rehab the property because it usually will need some repairs. And they sign the deed to you or add you to the deed, quit claim you onto the deed, and you fix the property up and you guys split the profits. Um, and that is a great technique to um, help offset some of your risk because they're paying the mortgage. They have to continue paying the mortgage and most of those deals that I do, they have to continue paying the mortgage and the mortgage funds were at a really low rate. Obviously, if you're going to go get hard money or private money, you're probably going to be paying in the double digits, 12, 15% for that money. And that's again, not a problem because you're going to be making 30, 40%. Um, if you're doing it correctly, if you're following, you know, some of the strategies that I would follow and that I do follow and that I, people that work with me follow. So you have money there. So it's not a problem that you're paying more for that cash um, or for those funds. But if they keep their mortgage in place, what is most people's interest rate on their mortgage? Most of them are 4%, 5%, some even three, you know, it gets people in an FHA loan, they're at like three and a half. So it's a really low cost of funds. And all you have to do is keep paying that mortgage while you're flipping it. And then you just come up with the rehab money, which is a pretty simple thing to do, pretty easy to find someone to loan you money to fix up a house with lots of equity. You've already done your numbers and you've said, okay, when I fix it up, the after repair value is going to be X. We're going to make Y. I need you to loan me 20 grand to get the kitchen redone and the bathroom redone, you know, repaint it, get the floors redone, get it up to date. And then we're going to put it on the market and we're going to split the profit. And you can write a contract to that. I have joint venture contracts that I have, um, that, um, some of my clients have as well is not hard to find very easy to do so that you have everything in writing. Um, obviously there's a certain way that you're going to want to set up your business where you are protected. Um, but we can get in that to later, but very, not hard at all. Not hard at all. Pretty easy to do. Pretty easy to get paid doing that as well. So um, that's equity partnering. So uh, let me quickly go back to uh, what I had and just go over a couple more with you guys just really quickly. So lease option. Oh my gosh. I really just kind of want to show you that really quickly. The lease option. Owner financing is, is what it's sometimes referred to. It depends on kind of what state you're in. Um, what state you're in because for example in the state of texas we can't say it's a lease option we do owner financing and some other things they don't like the term i think this lease purchase i forget exactly it um it how they what it can't say but it basically is a lease purchase because they have deemed what they're going to pay for the property once you get someone into the property and at that point you are just selling the terms and that's why this can be really lucrative and why you can use craigslist for some of this stuff is you find someone that has bad credit. Usually people with bad credit, so funny, usually have money, probably because they're not paying very many people. So long story short, you take that and you say, all right, 
you want to pay how much per month and how much do you have down? And those are basically the questions that you ask them. And then you go find them an owner finance property for them to lease and then buy. And then you negotiate all of the terms up front because people, you know, as a real estate investor, you're thinking a little bit more savvy. The average consumer is just thinking, if these terms work for me, I want to do it. And so that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to find a deal, a house that meets their terms. So if they're looking to pay $2,000 a month and they have $5,000 down, you just find a house on those terms. And, and we can really get into this way too much for me to do on this call, but you find a house on those terms and that can be very profitable for you because $2,000 a month for 30 years with $5,000 down, you know, that could be a house that you think is like $120,000 and they paid you $200,000, $400,000 for that house because they bought it on the terms. And as a real estate investor, you don't buy houses based on the terms, but consumers do. Most people do. So you just have to speak their language and sell them on the terms that they want and find them a house with the terms that meets their needs. And they don't even necessarily worry about how much they're actually paying, how much the mortgage is and how much profit that is for you, because that's not their concern. Their concern is getting the house that they like at the terms that meets what they want. So is a lot of opportunity there. You can do build new construction houses and sell it on those terms. So owner financing is very lucrative. Um, there's a lots of ways to do it. You can do wraparound mortgages. So say, for example, you find a house and the you kept, you kept the mortgage in place from the owner. You basically do a wraparound mortgage. So that person's mortgage may be $1,000 a month. you put ads out for owner financing and that person has $5,000 down or $10,000 down and $2,000 a month. Your mortgage is a thousand and it's, a, it's in someone else's name. Okay. You own the house. The deed is in your name. The mortgage is in someone else's name. You found someone to pay $2,000 a month for that property with $5,000 down, with go, which goes into your pocket. That's your money. So you made $5,000 down and a thousand dollars a month. That's wraparound mortgages subject to. So you have to kind of understand at that point assignments because you got to get the contracts under and you put you get them all with assignments so you can assign the contract if you need to you're getting them done subject to I have um, contracts legal contracts done by an attorney that I've already paid for that um, uh, people that work really closely with me they have access to these contracts as well and you do a wraparound mortgage and again you pocket five thousand dollars and they've won you've won and like I said in the last video you're meeting their needs and it's a win for both of you so that is an awesome way and awesome thing that you can do um, great information on fixing and flipping. I'm actually going to do a whole video on just flipping and some, there's just so much. I probably can break it into five um, videos and I'll do that. Um, just talking about, you know, step one, step two, how to analyze the deal, how to know some of your numbers um, and really just start to share with you guys uh, so that you can really see that there's a lot of opportunity here. And that's, that's what I'm trying to create and tell people about and talk through people and we're partnering and we're doing deals and it's fun. And um, it, doesn't require sitting in a cubicle. It doesn't require sitting at a desk or being somewhere at 830 and leaving at 430 and all this other stuff. And it's way more money and it gives you the flexibility. And again, not saying anything negative about people. If that's what you choose to do with your time and you want to go sit in a cubicle, have at it. But this will give you an option because you have money coming in that frees you up. If say that layoff comes, you just, you don't care. You have other streams of income. This is about multiple streams of income. And if you truly want to be wealthy, you need multiple streams of income and real estate investing is an awesome way to create another stream of income with very little money. And in some cases, absolutely no money. Like I told you, if you are taking over someone's mortgage or you partner with someone and you got brought a deal to them, they paid you $5,000. So you can really just go find deals worth about $5,000. So if you just found one deal per month at five grand, times 12, that's 60 extra thousand dollars a year you can do. And we call those people bird dogs. You can just make, and I'll actually do a video on just bird dogging and how you can literally make 60 grand a year, just bird dogging and while having a full-time job, literally I've done it. I've taught other people to do it. It's very simple. It's not hard. And it's again, very profitable. And it will give you those, those cushions of money that you have in your bank account where you don't stress about a layoff and you don't stress about, Oh, I'm not working right now. Or if I don't, if you don't want to work, I don't want to work. Or you want to stay with your kids, stay with your kids, do what you want to do. 
um, because that's what life is about, doing what you want to do and living your best life. And real estate is a great vehicle for that. So that is the point of this video. That is the point of this teaching. Hopefully you learned something. I um, look forward to your comments. Leave your comments below. I do respond to them. Thank you so much. Bye, guys.